Hello everyone, I'm Chad Real from RealDealEV.com. Today we're going to be going over how to install an instrument cluster. We're going to start up in the front of the Tesla Model S. This is a P85D, uh, so it has the motor in the front, uh, as you can see by the front design here. And so we're going to start out by removing these side plastic pieces. Uh, you're just going to move that little rubber grommet around and pull it right out. Some of these clips uh, I've taken in and out of my car numerous times, so yours might be a little bit harder. These clip in just fine, but uh, those three pieces are all you need to do to be able to access this front area with the carpeted area. So you're going to pull out the carpet, which is going to expose two 13 millimeter bolts uh, towards the top of the front. Uh, after you remove those two 13 millimeter bolts, there's two eight millimeter bolts that are towards the front of the car. Uh, you'll remove those. After you have those four bolts removed, that's the only thing that holds that front uh, plastic pan into the front of the car. I've sped things up here a little bit to make it a little bit faster. I don't actually work this fast. I wish I did. Right now I'm removing the front light. Uh, it's a simple little clip in there. Um, it does take a little finesse. Don't yank on it, otherwise you're going to break the tabs that hold it together. But you just put your thumbnail in there and it'll pull right out. And right below the light is the emergency front release in case you get locked in there. Right now I'm just removing those two 8mm bolts. And then you're going to see, I'm going to make a mistake here. I, I go ahead and start to pull it out and then I realize that there's a rubber grommet that holds the lights in place or the wiring for the lights in place. So I quickly remove those and then the trunk, the front pulls right out. And now you can see all your, your goods inside of there. You got your electric motor. Right now I'm showing how to disconnect the 12 volt battery, the negative side, just a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, and then there's another 10 millimeter bolt on this side, but as you can see, I start to turn it and I realize that the post is actually loose. There's an eight millimeter bolt that holds it to the top of the post. This is one of Omu's batteries. Uh, you can find it on the Real Deal website. It's a very nice battery. We've teamed up with them and they've come in really nice. Right there, I was showing how to remove the bracket that holds the 12 volt battery in place. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts, one on top, one on the bottom. Once that bracket's removed, that battery comes right out. And now I've shifted focus up to the high voltage disconnect loop. And this one is a dual motor again, and so it's in a different location, but you're gonna remove two plastic tabs and then two eight millimeter bolts. And this is gonna remove the air filter housing out of the way. You have to do all this just to be able to disconnect the high voltage disconnect loop. The only reason that you really need to do this is after you replace the cluster screen, you have to reset the system. And now we've gone to the inside of the car. This is going to go pretty quick because um, I've done this quite a few times, but I just removed one T15 bolt. That's the only thing that holds the lower portion, the knee kick pad in place. There was another little piece that I just took off. That's the inside of the door trim. It's just a little plastic cover. Again, it's just tabs. So just pressure and it pulls right off, just like that. Uh, that knee kick plate, you can just pull that right off. And now I'm gonna go around and get all the T15 bolts, uh, screws. That one right there was for the air vent housing. And then there's two on the left air vent housing. As you can see now, I'm lifting up on the instrument cluster screen. There's a little leather beautification piece that clips right into that instrument cluster. Yours won't be loose like that. It'll have screws there. Mine has been a demo and I've replaced multiple screens in it, trying things out. And so I skipped putting the bolts back in there. Right now you're going to remove this little plastic cover, which is going to expose two T15 screws again. This one, I always use a screwdriver or a, a T torque a T15 screwdriver because it's hard to get a drill in there. This here is the air wedge that works out really well. Basically you just pump it up kind of like a, a nurse's cuff to check your blood pressure and you just gently help guide 
the dash up as the air bladder actually lifts the dash itself. You're just there to help make sure some of those clips come undone. If you're putting a lot of air into it and it's not moving, stop and redo it. Now this gives you access to the top T15 bolts. So there's going to be one on the air vent, then you're going to have one for the instrument cluster surround, and then you're going to have, as you're going across, one more for the instrument cluster, and then keep going. Now you're going to have another one for the instrument cluster, then one for the instrument cluster surround. And I must have removed the screw for the top of the other air vent. This one's fairly hard to pull off. Uh, make sure you just use good pressure. I wouldn't put any tools in there. Now I'm pointing out the four screws that would normally hold on the instrument cluster. I've already taken off the top two just a second ago. Now you remove the bottom two and the instrument cluster is ready to slide out. From here you're going to remove the two clips. One of them is just a push button clip with a like a rotating tab on it for the larger clip. And then for the smaller one, it looks kind of like a coax cable. Uh, it's just a small little push button clip. And that's it, you got your instrument cluster out. And normally there's a little cover that goes on the back of mine, but like I said, it's kind of a demo and gets used quite a bit. All right, so now we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you here how to remove the ribbon cable, that white piece of Plastic there will not come out on yours. Mine's broken. Uh, you just lift up on that and then pull the ribbon cable out. And just like I just did there, there's another black one for the other ribbon cable. You just lift that tab up and the ribbon cable comes right out. That there's the cover. I was just showing you that normally yours is gonna have that cover over the back. Now you're gonna remove these T10 screws. There's quite a few of them. I think there's probably eight. There's one tricky one that stays underneath that ribbon cable. And then after that, you, have, you can pull the driver board right out. Now you're only gonna have one screw that actually holds the instrument cluster to the housing itself. And after you have that removed, then your cluster's out. So this is how you'll get your new cluster from Real Deal. It'll come in this bag uh, with our logo on it. And the only thing that you have to do from this point is you're gonna end up transfer transferring the ribbon cable from your old screen to your new screen. And it's easy process. You're just gonna lift up on these little plastic tabs and pull the ribbon cable straight out and then vice versa. You wanna make sure you get it pushed all the way in on the new one. So pull the little plastic tabs up Make sure you pull the new one up and then you're gonna slide the ribbon cable in and make sure it's straight and then push the locking tab down. That's all you gotta do to transfer one to the other. I was trying to be really careful with that screen because that's actually another good screen. I was just doing this one for demonstration purposes. So now you're gonna feed the ribbon cables through the slot in the housing. You're gonna attach the one T10 screw that's all that holds the screen to the casing at this particular point. And now you're gonna attach the driver board to the back of the housing. So start with the small center T10. That way you can hook up your ribbon cable using the white plastic tab. Push that down. Insert the ribbon cable in and flip the black plastic tab over and lock it into place. Now obviously you want to be really careful here. I'm using a drill. Uh, I don't even let the drill bottom out, but it makes it much quicker. You're gonna put it all, I think there's eight of those T10s. And then I went ahead and I think I'm gonna put the cover back on to this one just so you can see how it'll look when you're completed. I will probably take mine back off. It's just a beautification piece. And that's it. 
I keep the plastic screen cover on the front of it so that way you don't get all your fingerprints all over it. And now you're going to pretty much go in the reverse procedure. You're going to hook up the uh, two wire harnesses that go to the back of the instrument cluster. You're going to hear them both click into place. That way you know that you got them locked in. The one coax cable will just click in and the other one will have that little rocker arm. From this point, you're going to put all your T15s in. So you're going to have four that are going to go into each corner of the instrument cluster. And now you're going to put on the right hand air vent. This is just going to just use some solid force to push it in. Make sure you can feel those clips kind of make sure they're in the right location and just give it a solid push. Same on the other side. And the only thing that holds these in are you got your top T15 on this one and then you got a bottom T15. Mine has this little plastics washer spacer. It goes in there. I don't know if they did that because it was making noise or if that's how all of them are done, but I just keep that in there. Uh, so that's the two on the air vent for that side. And then on the other side, you're going to have two T15s for the bottom and then one T15 for the top. Now at this point, I went ahead and took off the clear plastic cover that comes on all the new instrument cluster screens. I struggled with it for a little bit, but I ended up getting it off there. Now it's like brand new. So at this point, I put the instrument cluster surround in. There's going to be four T15s again that hold uh, this in place. Again, I kind of cheated on the last one. I only had two in the top. So there's a total of four that goes around the whole thing. That's that beautification piece that I just slid out of the way. That's actually going to just clip right into the instrument cluster surround. And now you can go ahead and release the air from the dash. When you do this, you want to make sure that you can kind of feel the clips going right into their location. You're just there to help seat those clips back into place. Uh, you're going to want to lift out a little bit on the left hand side on the door where the there's a little tab that goes over there. It'll get caught up on the top of the, depends on how high you take it up, the dash itself. I wouldn't go very high with it, but you're going to want to pull that out a little bit to help make sure the dash goes down in its original location. Then you're going to put those two T15s in and put the plastic cover on and then that portion is all done. Now I'm putting on the last T15 that goes into the dash itself. And the next step is to put in the kick panel that goes underneath the steering column there. The only thing that holds this one in is the clips and then there's one T15. And after you get that on, you're pretty much done. So that's pretty much the easiest way that I know how to replace the instrument cluster screen. Now keep in mind when you replace your screen, one of the things that you're going to have to do is reset that high voltage battery system. I know it's a pain, it's an extra step that you got to do, but I've tried to do it without disconnecting that high voltage and the screen will just be black. It will never boot up. So you got to actually reboot the system through that high voltage dis disconnect to be able to get the screen to work. So if you ever put it in and it doesn't work and you didn't disconnect the high voltage, that's your problem. Last thing I'm doing is just making sure this is fully seated in the location. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest pieces to get in because you got to make sure that all the clips align and it's a big piece that probably has eight total clips. So once those clips are in place, that's pretty much it. You're going to wrap everything up and you have successfully replaced your instrument cluster. So go visit us at realdealev.com and thanks for watching.